So hexane C6H14 burns with dry air to give products with a dry molar analysis of, so these are key words, dry molar analysis of, and then 10.7% CO2, 5.4% O2, and 83.9% N2. And it asked for the first part is give me the balanced reaction equation. So start with the hexane, C6, H14, and we're going to get the oxygen from air. And so we leave a space in front, and we're going to be determining that stoichiometric coefficient in our equation. And so we'll assume complete, so that those are on the left-hand side, the reactants, and the products on the right-hand side. From the dry molar analysis, we know that it's uh, 0.107 CO2 and 0.054 O2 and 0.839 N2 multiplied by some unknown coefficient. That gives me the right proportion of the dry molar analysis. And then what was not accounted for is how much H2O. So basically we have three coefficients to determine. So let's take a look at this. If you do a carbon balance, maybe I'll try and tuck it up here, a C balance. If you do a carbon balance, how many are on the left-hand side? Six. What do we have on the right-hand side? Some unknown coefficient, we can call that A, times 0.107 times 1. Any other place, carbon? No. And so we can determine that A, and so we'll determine the A to be 5, 6.07, 56.07. All right. Now, let's take a look at a hydrogen balance. We have a carbon balance, then a hydrogen balance. True? How many uh, hydrogens on the left hand side? 14. How many hydrogens over here? So we determine what's in front of the H2O. Can you see what the coefficient A is, 2A, in front of the H2O? 7, true? So we solved for that coefficient in front of the H2O. And then the next balance would be an oxygen balance. So if you do an oxygen balance, I have two times, and I'm just going to continue to reuse the letter A, two times A is equal to 56.07 times 0 0.107 times 2 plus, this is a square bracket, um, 0 0.054 times 2, close that bracket, add 7. True? Did I do the oxygen right? So you're accounting for the contribution, the contribution, the contribution. I'm sorry, it's, it's a long equation, but it wraps around this bracket, closes this bracket. That's a 2. Okay. And if you solve for it, you find that you need a 12.53. 12.53. Last balance, do a nitrogen balance. Let me just put it up here. Uh, we have 12.53 times 3.76 times 2. Is that equal to 56.07 times 0.839 times 2? And the answer is close enough. It's good to right at three digits, not four and five and six digits, but, you know, it's because these numbers have been truncated, it's close enough. So the nitrogen balance is a check. So there is the answer to part A. We can go ahead and box it. Yes, I should get rid of this underlining here. And there you go. Now, what is the percent theoretical error? Well, we should get a, a balanced equation with just 
uh, normal combustion, 100% combustion of this hexane fuel. So C6H14 plus O2 plus 3.76N2 goes to CO2. We can do the carbon right away because carbon only occurs in front of the CO2 and in the fuel. So that's 6 plus H2O. Do the hydrogen balance right away. 7 plus do the oxygen going backwards. So that's 12 plus 7 is at 19. Then 19 divided by 2 will be the coefficient in front of the air. And to finish it out, balance the nitrogen, 19 over 2, 3.76 N2. So there it is. That's that's would be um, the amount of, uh, this would be 100% theoretical error. Okay. But for the original problem, what is the percent of theoretical error? Well, we're going to have the the uh, the the number of moles of air is equal to 12.53 times 4.76. True. That's how many moles of air you actually have per mole of fuel. How about if it's 100% theoretical? How many do we have? 19 over 2 times 4.76. True? So if you take that uh, ratio, the percent theoretical error, there's no nice symbol for that, so I just write it out, percent theoretical error, is equal to the ratio of... Um, 12.53 divided by 19 over 2. You see that? So how much air actually was used versus if it would have been 100% theoretical air, which was 19 over 2. Oh, you could put the 4.76 on both sides. 4.76. But they cancel, right? Because they, they're in both here. And so when I do that ratio, we calculate that it's 130. 2% theoretical error, or just leave it like this. Theoretical error is 132%. Where did you get the 19 I had to balance it for 100% theoretical error. And then I, the, really what I'm doing is I'm comparing this to this. All right. So 12.53 divided by 19 over 2 gives us that it's 132% theoretical error. Part C asks, what is the air to fuel ratio on a mass basis? So air to fuel, that's the mass of air. So we do the number of moles of air times the molar mass of air divided by the mass of fuel, the number of moles of fuel times the molar mass of the fuel. So the number of moles of air, 12.53 times 4.76, true? times 29 or 28.97 kilograms per kilomole for air, the molar mass. Now, we had one mole of fuel, and we have to get the molar mass of fuel. I look up hexane. I don't see it anywhere in the appendix, but I can calculate it close enough, right? Every carbon is worth 12, and every hydrogen is worth 1. So 12 times 6 plus the 14 gives me 86. And so the air to fuel, 20.1, meaning I need 20.1 kilograms of air per kilogram of fuel in, in the combustion chamber. And then what is the dew point temperature of the combustion products in degree C, assuming it's at one bar? So the way you do it is calculate the mole fraction of vapor in the products. The mole fraction of vapor in the products would be the 7 moles of water. That's how many moles of water. Divided by the total number of moles of everything. And you can calculate that by um, doing 
56.07 times 1.07. That'll give you the number of moles of CO2. Add that. That'll be the number of moles of CO2 and O2. The number of moles of CO2, O2, and N2 added with the 7 from the vapor. So that gives me the total in the denominator, total number of moles or kilomoles. So the mole fraction of vapor is right at 11.1%. So the vapor pressure is the mole fraction of the vapor times the atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is one bar, and so it's 0.111 bar. And then we do an interpolation in the table to find the temperature dew point. It's around 48 degrees C. So around 48 degrees C. If the products go below that, you'll have water condensing. If the product temperature is above that, then all the water can be in the vapor state.